All right. Bye. Nightcap Live. I'm Dan Dunn. Had a very exciting show tonight. I'm going to be drinking cognac. We have not had cognac yet on Nightcap Live. It, I'm very excited, and we're going to be drinking with Tracy Tudor, and she's going to be, she's very excited about this cognac. I talked before the show. She's like, you know what? Nothing gets me Jack to go out for, to have some dinner than a bunch of cognac. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be drinking it. It's, it's, called the, uh, it's called the Cognac Track Eau de Vie Express from Flaviar. We've got Maison Seren. We've got Paul Beau and, oh, I can't say it. Jury de Chateville. There's my French. Wow. Those are the three cognacs. We're going to be diving into those in, in just a few minutes. As always, I invite you to check out my podcast. It's called What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn. Coming up in the next uh, couple of shows, we've got legendary screenwriter George Gallo, Midnight Run, Bad Boys, Lars Ulrich from Metallica is going to be on the show, Maynard James Keenan from Tool. We're doing a two-part special on the 20 most important uh, cocktails ever. I got some of the best bartenders in the world going to be on that show, and it's the definitive list of the 20 uh, most important cocktails ever. Called What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn. It's available everywhere podcast stream you can follow me at the imbiber is that it is it yeah that's it at the imbiber on the twitter and the instagram now i'm going to do something different tonight normally i i bs a little bit say some stuff blah, blah. i'm not doing that i'm not doing that because i owe you better than this tonight we're gonna go right to our guest how jazzed i am about it she is a top real estate agent at Douglas Elliman, Beverly Hills. Douglas Elliman, I see the signs everywhere. I'm in Venice and it's also expensive and they're all over. They're good. She's the first and only female cast member on Bravo's million dollar listing, Los Angeles. Fed, can we run a quick clip from that there? Clip? Yeah, it's worth Yeah. <laughs> this season on Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles. The LA market is shifting and it's not falling, it's stabilizing. This is bananas. You could have still tried to get that listing without saying anything about it. I just call it like I see it. For more on Million Dollar Listing, go to bravotv.com. <laughs> oh, oh, we're back. She's also the author. This tome right here, see it? There it is, right in front of you. Fear is just a four-letter word. How to develop the unstoppable confidence to own any room. Please welcome to the show, Tracy Tudor. What, what's up, Dan? How are you? I really like watching you hold that book with such right. confidence. By the way, <laughs> over the last four months, I have mastered, uh, I'm unstoppable confidence in any room in my house. You know why? Because I'm the only one here. Yeah, you got this. Nailing yeah, I, uh, Million dollar listing. This was a ten thousand dollar sheriff's sale. This place right here. A new <laughs> show we should do. So how how's it going? You uh you got a new book out. Um, we you and I talked a little bit off the air. It's ex so exciting. This is your first book, right? Yeah. I mean, that was a trip. So I'm happy that we're almost there and it comes out next Tuesday. But holy moly, that was a lot of work and. I don't think I knew what I was signing up for. This is not your first rodeo, as I know, Dan, but for me, that was like a, you know, I mean, talking about like conquering fear, like writing a book was not something that came naturally to me, but we got there. I feel like it's, you know, I feel good about it. And so I'm excited to have it come out and get through this awesome Zoom press that I've been doing nonstop. But um, this is a fun one. Now, are you are you at all bummed out about it? I'm sure you had a book tour and all that going. Did it bum you out at all? Or you just yeah, you're I mean, it, obviously, when you're writing your first book and there's a lot of discussion about you know doing a press tour for a few weeks and you know getting out there and going to bookstores and doing signings, like none of that is happening. So talk about like having to figure out how to pivot. Um, you know, I'm. I had to figure that out in a very short period of time. And so we've tried to do the best that we can with what we are dealing with. And so it's a lot of Zoom calls and talking about the book and 
doing live interviews and chatting with fans and just trying to get it out there as much as we possibly can with, you know, the limited interviews that we can do. Yeah. Speaking of fans and books and drinking, which we're going to do, we do this every week on, on Nightcap Live. We have a contest. We're going to be giving away a Flaviar uh, membership. As I'm saying this right now, I'm realizing that my director, Keith, told me that I was supposed to brush up on the Flaviar talking points, and I, I didn't. I just didn't do it. I'm sorry. So let me think if I got it right. Flaviar is a quarterly membership club. That I know. Got that part right. And, and every quarter, you're going to get a box, and I'll have little tasting things in them, and it's going to have all sorts of spirits that you, a lot of them you can't get anywhere else, allocate, highly allocated stuff. Plus, it gains you access once we're able to go out again to cool events, and you get to be part of a group of people who love spirits, appreciate the finer things in life. I hope I didn't screw that up, because well, now I feel like he's already, he's already sending me a message. So I already um, have a question, Dan. Is Flaviar a brand of cognac? So are we no. getting, like... We join are we getting no nope. flaviar is the name of the uh, is the name of the, the membership uh group that so they curate all different sorts it could be tequila could be rum we've had whiskey cognac they offer the they run the gamut of spirits yeah so they're like branding special spirits and doing like a membership only type situation that's it. it. Well, some of the stuff is some of the stuff is signature stuff, Brandon. But a lot of it are this, you know, all the spirits you know from all over the place, the biggest names. Now these are some cognacs, and we're going to get into those in a second. But let me get this contest going here, Trace. I want to tell people how they're going to win this Flaviar membership. And you know what? I'm going to throw in a second prize for the maybe uh -huh. the runner-up. I'm going to throw in a copy of my book, American Wino: Tale of Red Rights and One Man. Is that what it's called? I don't even know. American Wino. Say that. Uh, I'll sign it. I'll send it to you. I want for, one. What's it? You want one too? Yeah. Um, I got two of them. One for the second runner up and then one for Trace. Okay. So here is the contest. Um, well, actually, tell us a little bit about the book because it's going to make this contest a little bit more juicy. Tell us a little bit about, about what the book is about. I mean, this book is written really for women or even guys that have felt sort of pushed down um, in their business life and or career, entrepreneurs, people in sales that are sort of struggling to make it and haven't found their way in the corporate world. And to me, it's like, you know, the time is now, figure it out, what's holding you back? And more often than not, that's confidence. And particularly with the younger generations, like, you know, you and I have been doing this for a minute. So you know, we've been in this world, we've failed a hundred times and, and now we're living our best lives. But, you know, I think that the younger generation has a lot to, to learn. They, you know, they're, they're teaching me as well about manifesting things, about thinking positively, but what they lack, I think a little bit is grit. And this book is about like figuring out the failure piece and sort of bringing yourself into um, the corporate world or the business world where you're going to come across people like me that are going to crush you if you don't walk into the room and figure out how to own it. So that's who I want to share that stuff because it took me 20 years to get to where I am. And I had no mentor that got me that could figure it out and say, Hey, by the way, big fat tip, like lose this or figure this piece out. Um, no one told me how to do anything. I learned by default. So um, that's why I wanted to write it. And I felt like having a platform on this show as the only woman on a franchise, you know, in two different cities, it was important for me to speak to that audience. So that's why I wrote it. And again, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so my book is nothing like that at all. It's uh, about a trip <laughs> I took around the United States, ostensibly to become a leading expert on wine in America. So now you know, so now here's the contest, everybody. So it's going to work. Very tricky. So I'm about to read you five quotes, five different quotes. Each one is from either Tracy's book, Fear is Just a Four-Letter Word, or my book, American Wino. All right? So it's going to be quote number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. All you're going to do in the comments thread, 
And by the way, send all your questions, comments, any observations, anything you want Tracy to answer, anything you want to tell Tracy, if you want to tell me to go to hell, because I know a lot of you do. I can or me. It. Yeah, really. I can take it. I'm tough. I can take it. So in the comments, put in your questions, comments, but also this is where you're going to do the contest. So if I'm, I'm going to read quote number one, and you're going to see it up on the screen, and you're going to either write fear for Tracy's book, wino for my book. So you're going to have five different quotes, and which one is it from? You're going to guess, and then we're going to have a tiebreaker at the end because I think some people might get them all right. So here we go. I don't know if any of this makes sense, but the first book quote, quote number one, which either comes from my book, book or Tracy's book, is this. Here we go. Tracy, don't give it away. Okay. Don't give it away. All right. I know you want to win the copy of Wino, but don't give it away. I do. All right. Here we go. Quote number one. For most of my life, I had wanted to be an actor. It was a passion, a source of inspiration, and it made me very happy. That's, that's the first quote. And that, did it come from this book? We're going to come from this book. Fear, why no? Write it down. All right. Number two. So then I had to deal with her diarrhea and beg on hands and knees. Not my specialty. Again, fear is just a four-letter word or American why no. Book quote number three. The way I see it, what's the point of walking a tightrope if the fall won't kill you? That's, that's number three. That's the word. Okay. Now we're on to number four. Ready? Ready? Okay. This woman wasn't that. She was a chick. Ultimately, I decided I didn't need to step in shit twice. I finally just got my shoe cleaned. All right. That's number four. And the final quote. Quote number five. Did you know it's possible to forget you took Ambien? It's true. Any <laughs> guess when that is likely to happen? When you're on a high dose of Ambien. <laughs> so there you go. There's your five. Is it fear? Is it why no? All right. Now, assuming some of, more than one of you get it right, here's the tiebreaker. Obviously, Tracy is one of the, one of the uh, great real estate agents in the country and in one of the most prestigious uh, areas of the country. So we're going to show you a house. Uh, this is from Bel Air. Thad, can you throw that picture up? Is a house that is for sale right now in Bel Air. I don't know if you, if you haven't heard of Bel Air, you're in fucking trouble. You're not going to get this right, okay? But if you've heard of Bel Air and you have any idea what real estate's like in, in the greater uh, Los Angeles area, then you might get close. And Slash at, never yeah. saw Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Think that. It, or the Beverly Hillbillies. It's right next to it. Yeah. So, okay. Look at that house that we just showed you, or maybe we are showing you right now. And that's the tiebreaker. So you send in your who the quotes were from, and then the tiebreaker is how much is that house listed for sale? What's the price on that house right now? That's your tiebreaker. Okay. You got it? Okay, good. So now, Tracy, it's time to have a little bit of cognac. And we'll talk about the book some more while we're doing this, but we got to get lubricated here. And uh, I want to, uh, so we're going to go to the first one. Okay. The first one. One that we have is A, and that's Maison Serene. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna take it open. You got a little glass there? No. Do I? Need oh, you're one? just gonna go from the bottom. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trashy like that. No. All right. I like. Where are you from? Where are you? Hey, where are you from? No. <laughs> where are you from originally? I grew up in the valley. Okay. L.A. All right. Bamford, that Bamford, explains it. That explains why you're just chugging oh. it from the bottle. Uh. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pour it in here. You and, told me, uh, Dan, I needed a cognac glass, which yeah. I wouldn't have anyway. What's going, on? What's going on over there? Okay. Somebody bringing you a glass? You're just going to do yeah. it that way? I'm alone. Okay. Nope. Oh. You can do it this way. We'll just nose it this way, all right? Okay. okay. It this is a. This is a, by the way, this is what's called a VSOP, and I should probably tell you there are various grades of cognac. Okay, there's VS, which stands for very special, or you, sometimes it has three stars on it. That's a blend in which the youngest brandy, and cognac is brandy, okay, has been aged at least two years in a cask. That's a VS. This is a VSOP, which stands for very special old pale. 
and, or this is a reserve cognac. And this means the youngest brandy or eau de vie in the mix, because there's going to be a bunch of different brandies mixed into this to make this, this particular cognac. The youngest one in here has spent four years in the barrel, okay? Uh, so this is our VSOP, and we're going to get the nose on that one. And I think this thing smells I right. think so good, and I don't know shit about So cognac. oranges, I'm getting oranges and figs and vanilla. Uh, so now, Tracy, I don't know how much tasting you've done. This is one of the things I recommend. Take a tiny sip to just and get it, swish it around your mouth. A little bit, just coat your mouth. Get the palate coated. Okay? Okay. I take a bigger sip. And now you take a bigger sip, and that's where you're going to get the, and not a big sip, but a, a, a slightly larger sip. And that's where you're going to be identified the flavors. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I mean, a lot of oak on that. The wood. So, by the way, cognac can only be aged in French oak. Yeah. Limousine oak is generally what they use in cognac. And that's got a different flavor profile than the American oak that's used for bourbon. It's, uh, it's got a, a little more spice on it, I think, and a little bit more, uh, sort of, again, sweetness and spice. It's kind of uh, the thing you get from that French oak. And also, I'm getting a little tropical thing going. You getting any of that, like the mango? No. Oh, I am. Now, I'll tell you a couple other things about uh, cognac, because we want to, uh, the grape that they use to make this is not a grape you would drink unless it was in cognac. It's called the Uni Blanc grape. That's, that's the primary grape that they use to do this. Generally, they distill it twice. Almost all cognac you're going to drink is going to be 80 proof, okay? There are exceptions. There's an overproofed one that we're going to have. The last cognac we tried no. is overproof. But most, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we want to get you a little tipsy. So they have to be, the grapes have to be sourced from these, there's six regions. It's called the Charente region of, of France. It's on the Western central part of France. That's where cognac is. And there's six contiguous growing regions where they, or they're called crews, like they do with wine, where they, and it's all along the Charente river there where they, where they source the grapes. And by law, they're the only grapes you can use. So the most desirable of these crews are called are called champagne. There's Grand Champagne, Petite Champagne, and the Borderies. Uh, so if you're confused, Tracy, you're not alone, okay? Because they're making a wine no one wants to drink unless it's a cognac. They're distilling it, and they're calling it champagne, even though it bears no resemblance to the bubbly we have on New Year's Eve. And uh, it's enough to make you want to curl up in a bottle. But they distill it twice in copper spot, pot stills. As I said, it's got to be at least two years in French oak generally limousine oak is what they use we talked about vs vsop there's also napoleon is a fairly new designation which means the youngest brandy is six years old xo is extra old have you ever seen an xo come i have i thought they were just that's, being cute that's now 10 years what used to be six and in april of 2018 they made it 10 years that so um it was supposed to be back in 2016 they were supposed to do that implement that rule they didn't have enough stock so the Napoleon designation, which used to be unofficial, took over for XO. Six years or higher, XO's 10 years or higher, okay? So just to back up a little bit, yeah. not only have you traveled the country drinking wine mm -hmm. and telling us about it, you're also a professional on spirits and cognac. We need to hang out. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you have access to really I, great houses. Yeah, yes, and I like to hang in yes, great houses. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All okay. right, we're doing this. We're making this happen. Like A. I'm into A. A's, A's really good. And it's a, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think that it's um. Do they mellow. get stronger as we go? Is that the, you know, kind of how you want to drink, like, the best wine first before you No, no, out? no. I think these are, these are all, these all have different qualities, characteristics, I think, that you're going to find. So, again, this one, 40, 40% uh, 40 alcohol, 80 proof. Excuse me. Yeah, exactly. And then the next one's going to be... Sorry, everyone. Yeah, hey, hey now. Um, <laughs> okay. Give me something else from the book. I am having trouble having confidence in the room. So I'm going to come to you. Let me think. Let me think of something. What would be an, an issue that I might have? Um, I'll tell you what. All right, like, I've got a big personality. 
there's yes. a big personality and I am having a really hard time man so dealing it, with this person. For me, it's like everybody has a big per Anyone that's successful, like extraordinarily successful has some element of having a difficult personality. And I talk about different personality traits in the book and how to navigate them. But more importantly, you kind of got to do your diligence ahead of time so that you know who it is that you're meeting, you know, about them. You've looked at their social media, you know, whether they are, you know, if they have a well a crafted social media account, they might be a little more egotistical versus like the fuzzy photo of their dog laying on their back. You know what I mean? It, it, these are all little things that you can do to kind of go, are they dating someone? Did they get a job promotion? Like what's happening with them? And, you know, then you can oftentimes figure out their, their personality type. Are they a creative? Are they an egomaniac? Like my client on the, this week's episode, um, there's several different types. However, that doesn't distinguish what mood they're going to be in when they're in the room. So by knowing what their personality type is, you're already setting yourself up for success so that you can kind of mirror, you know, what mood they're in when you walk in the door. And also people love to be flattered. So when you know something about them and you congratulate them on a move that they just made recently, or you say, I read your book. Like, I mean, you know, that would be a touching moment for you. Like, you read my book? Really? Like, yeah, I heard I was going to be on your show. So I grabbed American Wino and I just sat down and read it. And it was fascinating. You know, okay. that's that's a way yeah. to connect with something, somebody. And that's, you know, how you're going to get them to trust you with their biggest asset that they have, which is their home. Okay. One of the things I was thinking, Tracy, especially given the the properties that you're dealing with and the people that can buy these properties, right? There's got to be a fair sense of entitlement to some of these people. So I, I'm i guessing that in, in the course of, of doing your job, what happens if you come across people that are inappropriate? Maybe they're, yeah, I mean... They're being, you know, they, they're used to being able to say and do what they want and they behave inappropriately, but you're still trying to conduct a business deal. For me, so it's versus reward. You know, I'm in a business where I work on commission and I work for free until I get a, a deal closed. So, you know, monetary compensation definitely comes into play and how much I'm willing to tolerate, you know, is my health out of whack? Am I going home and I'm, am I anxiety ridden every time I have to walk in the room with them to me? It's just that then the monetary compensation becomes less important. So I dealt with that this week on our show with a, a $500 million portfolio that I went out for and ended up landing. But the guy's ego was gigantic. I mean, this is a guy that looked at me and said in our first meeting, I'm a beast. And then proceeded to tour me around the house. And as he was walking me around, I said, do you mind if I set my purse down? And he looked around like a weirdo and then said, yeah, you can put it on the rug on the floor over there. He didn't want me to set my purse down anywhere because he didn't want his house to be touched. And I was like, this is weird. So it was like, I was, I was clocking all of this stuff. And then we got upstairs and he looked at me and was like, you look nervous. And I was in that moment, I thought to myself, okay, I know who I'm dealing with now. I'm going to have to like match this like ego bullshit because he's, he's, he's living for this and loving that he's trying to make me uncomfortable. So I looked at him and I said, trust me, I'm not nervous. Not even a little bit. And it yeah. kind of like threw him because it was a little throwaway for me, but then all of a sudden he was like, oh, oh, okay. And then at the end of the listing appointment, he looked at me and was like, so you know if you fail, you're fired, right? And I just looked at him and I said, I don't fail. And, and you know, it's like I had, like, none of that is true. I fail all the time. But I was knew this, the ego and the bullshit that I was dealing with, I had to sort of match with like, so that I wasn't thrown because there are sophisticated buyers that were coming into that house and he didn't want uh, anyone to show it other than himself. And like, when you're walking into a house to say, look at it, do you want the owner there? No. You don't. 
No, particularly an owner that's like, I have the best house in all of America. And, you know, if you have anything bad to say about it, I'm going to kick you out. And by the way, take your shoes off. Don't set your handbag down and please don't touch the doors. So, <laughs> you know, these are the personality types I deal with all the time. You just have to learn how to respond to them in the moment and be able to pivot when things aren't working. Yeah. Well, you're, uh, you're, you're obviously uh, being here and being sort of in the belly of the beast, dealing with that has, re has really honed your skills to the point where, again, look, there it is. <laughs> and get those, get those contest entry uh, answers in and win the Flavio. I remember, so now we're going to jump on to another cognac. Ready? It's we're got one of my favorite names. It's called Paul Bow. I'm already getting hot by the way does that mean the cognac's kicking in that's it that's it yeah that could be me that could be me yeah. that's you dan i know All i like the fantasize of my very sexy that i'm more yeah that's it uh okay paul Bo. great name right yeah uh this goes back to the end of the 19th century the Bo family uh they had a bunch of places right in the prime vineyards there in the Champagne uh, region of Cognac. Oh, yeah. So this is a VSOP again. Very special old pale. Do you this smell the difference on that one? This one to me. The other one smelled sweeter. This is spicier. I love that you're drinking it out of that vial. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I'm so white trash like that. I love it. Get a Coke. If you got a Coca-Cola, tubes, dump it in there. I should just throw on a Make America Great Again hat. And just there we go. We're doing it. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's take a sip of this. Okay. Do you ever drink cognac? Oh. <coughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is funny now. If I start sneezing. What's right. going on? Nope. If I start, I go like 10 sneezes in a row. <laughs> I stopped it. Wow. Are you a cognac fan? You know... Dan, no, I'm not, okay. not generally. I'm a tequila girl, which I've heard on some level, there's certain, like, or is it Japanese whiskey that can be like, I, the whole thing is very confusing to me. Well, cognac, you know, it's, it's an, I believe cognac is an acquired taste for people because you're, you're, you're always going to have that big, it's, it's big flavor, cognac. There's a lot of wood influence that goes into it. Um, it is not, it's not a drink for someone who doesn't necessarily enjoy, people that drink cognac are going to like whiskey. They're going to, you know, they're going to like scotch. They're going to like bourbon. Uh, but because, not tequila. You don't classify tequila in that because I feel like I've been drinking, you know, sipping tequila for 10 years. Before it was different, trying. It's a different, yeah, way different f flavor profile. And, uh, you know, even if you're drinking an aged tequila that has some wood on it, yeah, it's still going to be way more delicate, I think, than, than cognac. And, and I, I don't, you know. Or drink situation. Yeah, I, I think it's a, uh, and by the way, we got some questions coming in for you. Hold on. Wait a minute here. Um, having a cigar tonight? Do you drink, do you smoke cigars? <laughs> no, I Decker? I did with the egomaniac on the the last episode. At the end, okay. one of the portfolio, he's a big cigar smoker. So I lit up a cigar and almost choked. And it, it, it was very pleasurable for him. Okay. Uh, Nikki Blandis wants to know, uh, Tracy, I love how this for Tracy as if it could be for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't sold a home. But okay. It's Just to clarify, it's for you. Uh, did you gradually work up from lower cost homes to the big leagues? If so, how much was your first sale worth the house? I, you know what's so crazy is everybody has this like memory of their first sale. I don't know if I smoked too much pot in college or what, but I like don't remember my first sale, but I guarantee you it was in the under $2 million price point and it was a friend doing me a favor on some level. But no, I didn't have, I didn't come out of the gate swinging at $30 million properties, not by a long shot. So it, it, it started, I built it and then I had my first major sale probably four years, three or four years in at uh, a little over 30 million. 
What do you do when you close that deal? If I, you go, what, what's the celebration like? I bought a Rolex. You yeah. Did. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, first of all, I was an actor. I thought I was going to be, you know, on stage and in the theater for the rest of my life. And I never anticipated making any real money. So what I didn't connect the dots on was the whole sales thing of selling yourself as an actor and selling in real estate is not that different. So yeah. I, that's when I connected the dots and, and became successful. And was there anything, was there in a moment where you felt like bad about giving up acting? No, I had a, like I had a couple of successful actor friends and I remember having a conversation with one of them and I went to USC with her and I studied theater and she studied film and was on a huge show called Wasteland back in the day. And I said like, what's it like? Like you're killing it. You're on the show. You're doing all this stuff. And uh, she's like, it's not like, you know, that creative space that we're used to living in and it's a business and it's long hours and super political and a lot of drama and a lot of ego. And I was like, oh shit. So as I'm waiting tables and grinding, because I feel like I have to put that time in and that grit that we were talking about earlier, even though I you know, I just felt like I had to put those hours in and I just woke up and I said, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I, I want to be financially independent. I want to, I want to do something else. And then lo and behold, you know, here I am later, like 20 years later on a TV show. <laughs> How are you? Cut to. Hanging out with me. Yeah. I know. Know. Drinking made... cognac. Um, Nikki Blandis also says, oh, now, I guess because I gave Nikki crap for giving you a question, has now given me one, and has said, I've, I've had cognac warmed. Is that unusual? Not at all. In fact, a lot of times with a cognac glass, what I would say is you you hold it, get your body heat to warm it up, okay? And, like and really, like, do it for about almost like eight to ten minutes, and it warms it up. It, it, it elevates the flavors. It intensifies the aromas of a cognac. You definitely want to have that thing at, you know, yeah, body temperature. Oh, what's the whole thing behind someone being sick and having a little cognac? Uh, alcoholism, I think it is, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm dying, I'm sick, but give me the cognac anyway. Uh, I don't, I haven't heard that one. Is cognac supposed to make you feel better if you're... Well, I don't know. Like, you've heard the philosophy of, like, have, you haven't heard anyone say, like, if your throat hurts or whatever, have a little cognac and, and like, it, I don't know. You're the alcoholic here. <laughs> no, I'm the, I'm the alcohol expert. Difference. Uh, yeah. But, uh, no, I don't, I don't ever remember. Yeah, look, I grew, I grew up poor in Philly. How crazy has anyone else ever heard that? Or is, maybe it's not cognac. Is that whiskey? Is it whiskey? If anyone out there has any idea what Tracy's talking about with the cognac being good for you when you're sick, no, no, I'm serious. Put a comment in the comment button. We'll get it. Come on, you guys. Somebody Google that for us and let us know what's going on here. <laughs> I have not heard that. I mean, there are, you know, I know Guinness, the beer, I don't they like say it. has curative powers and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, First I haven't one, heard that about a, cognac. A is um, my favorite. B is not my jam. What's not your what? B is not your jam. All right, no not problem. We get we're gonna go to C in a second. But uh, Cheryl Imes wants to know, Tracy, describe your self talk before going into an uncomfortable room. Oh, uh, like the sixty second rule. So like, you know, before I walk into like a super big pitch, um, you know, that I'm nervous for, like the one that you guys saw on Tuesday night. I like I take a beat where you just have all that like pent up anxious energy and it's positive but it's like you know when you see a boxer walk into a ring and they like get out all that intense energy and they're like oh you know like what the hell is wrong with them why are they yeah. screaming or why are they like blowing out because they're like getting it you're they're getting that energy out so that they can center themselves and focus on the goal and whatever that is for you that is for you but I always take 60 seconds and 
and sort it out. I'll, if I'm in the car on the way to a listing appointment, I'll turn on music and I'll just check out of the phone for a minute and not take calls and just get like my head in the game. Um, you know, in the case of Tuesday night, I was an absolute wreck and that's exactly what I did. I sorted it out. I blasted some music and I said, you know what? You've done all the prep work, like leave it all on the table. If he doesn't like you, fuck him. Yeah. It's a good attitude, right? Well, you know, you went and you lose some. And this is what you're going to get in this book. <laughs> doesn't like it, fuck him. Get him with the book. Uh, you're not getting that in this book. None of that. <laughs> weird we'll have to buy but him. We'll give I am one. excited to see how many people got those, if they got the quotes right. We'll see what happens here. Now, let's go on to our third final cognac. Uh, <laughs> this one is, I'm going to, uh, I'm just this so one's lighter. It's it's actually okay. It has more alcohol in this. Okay, this is a oh. um, this is an overproofed, uh, which in cognac world means it's not. It means it's not uh, uh, eighty proof, which is normally where that's going to be. You know, um, like it's like eighty five or ninety. Yeah, this one is it's fifty five percent alcohol, so it's hundred and ten proof. Holy. Yeah. So you Guess what? If I take down this tube, I'm toast. <laughs> Chug that tube. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not going there at all. Now, <laughs> let's try to pronounce this. It's Shuri de Chanelville. I'm messing it up. I, I, mean, I can't. I, and I apologize to the French people, but just the nose on that is stupendous. I'm serious. Like, try the nose there. Mm. Right? What is that, vanilla? It doesn't <laughs> that is, smell like dessert? It? That's a dessert smell right there. That's like... Uh, Sweet. I'm getting yellow cake. Right? I, like a, a birthday cake, almost. Yeah. I Isn't admit it? you on that. Yeah. It's so... The nose on this is stupendous. I love it. You almost okay. have to go out of it for a second and then go back in. Mm. It is vanilla cake. Right? You know that. You're like the guy from Sideways, Dan. <laughs> that's a, who knew? Uh, yeah, that's a delicious one. Now, take a little bit of this, and you're going to definitely get a little bit more heat from the alcohol. But I, but I also, what's striking to me is you get that alcohol heat, but there's also this really, um, uh, like a, uh, a smooth fruitiness to it. Like I, there's some apples and some pears. It, there's no harshness to it, even though it's hot. Ooh. Holy right? moly. Like a, there's a burn. You get yeah. that burn, right? That's a strong burn. Yeah. This will give you some stomach issues. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you take when you're sick. Yeah. Yeah, so. I get Your throat hurts. Let's burn it with C. Mm. Uh, you're right, though. It's funny. On the first taste is was like the most prevalent one, where it was like super heaty on the on the way down. But then afterwards, I couldn't figure out what it was. But it, you're right. It kind of like switched to I don't know. You can define it better. Well, than this me. is a, what ends up happening. The sort of the timeline of when you're drinking is you're going to get when you first introduce it to your palate, you're going to get certain things, and they happen and. You're, you start to salivate, you get that starts mixing. But then at the end, there's a different impact, and that's what they call the finish. You know, there's a life cycle to how you experience any spirit, you know, from what you taste at the outset, the opening, and then what you get at the end is in any well made spirit is going to be different. You're, you're, it's going to evolve as you're, as you're drinking it. Which, I, which is a great thing, you know. Uh, this, by the way, only, I think, 330 bottles of this made its way into the United States. So this is a rare cognac. Yeah. Like a super expensive one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's no joke. Yeah, it's no joke. I mean, you know. But when we hang out in Beverly Hills, get this done. What you're bringing me is like a housewarming gift. Yeah, this is what I'm bringing you. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> Oh, we got more stuff coming in here. Hold on. Uh, Tracy, Ron, Ron's wood turning shop said, where can you buy the book? 
anywhere, Ron's anywhere. It's it's going to be anywhere you can. I mean, online, I guess at this point, right? Yeah, it's 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 Tuesday. Tuesday it comes out, but you can order it on Amazon right now. Okay, Jim Jim Caring 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 said in Germany a shot of cognac is a popular flu remedy, as it is believed that it will ease flu symptoms and help the body cleanse itself of the virus. Wait a minute, cleanse itself of the virus? Totally. Why are we? That? Do we, do we vi any virus? Just, the, you know, drink the <laughs> cognac, right? Right now, drink this cognac and we'll be fine. This is what we should be giving everybody. Mm. Um, my God, I like it. I, I, it's, I knew I heard that somewhere. I'm surprised that you haven't, as, as be, being an expert, that you wouldn't hear these kinds of random tales Some from us. Some things escape me. I'm a, a drinking expert. you got to realize. Yeah. When you're a spirits expert, you forget most of what you learn. Yeah, because <laughs> of the spirits. Um, I hope everybody's getting your, uh, your get in there. We're going to just a couple of more minutes to get your answers in. I guess you probably would have done it already. Uh, Keith, did anybody, do we have some, did, did anybody put it? I mean, they did, but I don't know how this contest is going to work. Are you going to send me a couple? Yes, do that. Send me a couple of, uh, should I recap what the, what the quotes were again? For you, Tracy? Well, oh. Let's see. All right. I'm going to throw these out. Well, I'm laughing because I think on a few of them, I was like. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to throw them out. I'm going to, let's recap now with the, with the, uh, Quotes from the book. Again, okay. five quotes. They're either from Tracy's book or Dan's book, both of which are available. Now, hers is going to be out Tuesday, but you can pre-order it. Go to Amazon, go wherever you get books, pre-order it. Mine is in the a bargain bin anywhere. It's like $2.99. You just get it. No. Um, all right. <laughs> so the, again, here we go. Don't we'll, worry. Just give, we'll give the answers out. Here we go. Here it is. Okay. Yeah. Quote number one. For most of my life, I had wanted to be an actor. It was a passion, a source of inspiration, and it made me very happy. What book is that from, Tracy? Well, I'm going to say mine. You are correct. That <laughs> is from Fear is Just a Four-Letter Word, page 192. So the first quote, Tracy's book. Quote number two. So then I had to deal with her diarrhea and beg on hands and knees. Not my specialty. Whose book? That's your book, Dan. No, that's your book. <laughs> Shut up! I swear to God. I... This is in Fear is Just a Four-Letter Word on page 124. You're talking about a something, and that was the quote, yeah. Dire, dire, oh! Oh, this is, from, this is the Lisa story. Yeah. Oh. Yes, okay. you're talking about a woman there. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, it. I was thinking right. this is throwing up alcohol situation. Okay. And Got in it. your defense, if someone quoted random things from, I wouldn't remember either. I'd be like, <laughs> did I write that? I Sounds mentioned. like something I wrote, but maybe not. And I also pick quotes that could have sounded like either one of us, hence the game portion of this. All right. So the first two quotes, fear, 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 fear. Yep. Quote number three, the way I see it, what's the point of walking a tightrope if the fall won't kill you? What book is that from? <laughs> I'll take Cognac, Alex, for 200. <laughs> yeah. American Wino. That was from American Wino on page 11. See, you I could have to read that, that too. I, I feel like you're trying to throw me after getting me drunk. <laughs> All right. Quote number four. This woman wasn't that. She was a chick. Ultimately, I decided I didn't need to step in shit twice. I finally just that's, got my shoe cleaned. Yeah, that's me. That's you. That is from, here's just four letter word, on page you know 198. Oh, and the final oh, quote, final quote on the game. Did you know it's possible to forget you took Ambien? It's true. Any <laughs> guess when that is likely to happen? When you're on a high dose of Ambien. That is, that? And, and I love it. And I want a copy of the book. Sign. That's from American Wino. Page 226. So now, Keith, can you shoot me through? And then we're going to do the uh, we're going to do the giveaway. We got a few here. Okay. 
And these are, are these are all people that got it right? I guess, yeah. Okay, no, not necessarily. Um, so what was the right ones? Here I got you. it. So fear, 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 wino, fear, wino. Fear, fear, wino, fear, wino. Okay, here we go. This is for the Flaviar membership. Nope. Oh, these are like the closest. Oh, no one's, no one got them all. Okay. Well, I didn't either. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to go. These are the ones that are closest. And then we'll do the tiebreaker on the house. So Noel Decker thought that got the first one right, that that was in fear. And then he got the next. Wino was wrong. But in your defense, Tracy also got it wrong. So well, yeah. Uh, also, yeah, and then uh, wine over here. All right, no, he's not too close. All right, Demler wine over. Here. This is confusing me. I'm just gonna randomly pick someone. <laughs> uh, all right, the house. We're just gonna go by who got it closest to what the house is. Good all idea. right, Noel Decker thinks. Can you, uh, Thad? Can you put that house up again for us so we can see this house here? Look at this house. Noel Decker estimated that the Sale price on this house listing is $16 million. Noel Decker has clearly not been to the Homeby Hills area of LA because for $16 million, that's what the Uber cost to get to that house. So <laughs> the cost is to get there in an Uber. All right. So, no. Nope. And oh, I'm Mike... sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm starting to think some people might have found this listing. Christopher <laughs> Blade said that house is. Three hundred million dollars, and I, yeah. I like your ambition, Christopher, but that's not right. And uh, two people have said that the price of the house. Mike Demler said it's thirty-eight point five million dollars. Ding ding. Opasone said it's thirty-eight point five million dollars. They looked it up. They're so smart. That's what I would have done. Which leads me to believe they looked it up. Well, you know what? No one said you couldn't do that. Nope. And so now we have to make a decision here, Tracy. Yep. Mike or me, one of them is going to get the Flaviar membership, and one of them is going to get a copy of my book, and I might even say we're throwing a copy of your book. Yeah. Okay, so who are who are the two? Uh... Mike, Mike Demler and Mia Opasone, if you're out there, we're going to give you one minute to write in which would you prefer, the books yeah. or the Flaviar membership? Yeah. All right, here we go. Right in, let us know. Tracy, I'm very excited for you about having this book out. As I've published a couple myself, I wish you could be on the road doing the signing thing, but you will. It'll come. I and, know. But it's exciting. It's really, you know, to be able to do that, take everything you've learned, put it down, put it out there for the world. Tell us, uh, so the show is on Tuesday nights? Yeah, the show is Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on Bravo TV. And um, you can find me at Tracy Tudor on Instagram. And if you got any questions or need any real estate, then just go to tracytudor.com. We have some more cognac in you. I mean, I'm going back to A. I'm, I'm not joking. I didn't have a whole lot of time to eat today, so... Maison Seren. That's your favorite. I Maison think so. It's like a little more mild. It didn't burn my throat. I like it. Um, I want to uh, let everybody know we got uh, next week. Who's coming on next week? Let me take a look here. Uh, very exciting about this. I'm always very excited. Who is? Oh, for, from the show Never Have I Ever. Have you ever heard of Never Have I Ever? You know what? I think I have. Who's on that? Is no, that no. like? Is well, that I like, do know Ben like, Norris is on it. Because he's going to be on our show next week on Nightcap Live from yeah. Never Have I Ever, which I believe just got renewed for a second I, season. I, I I used to play that game. How do you? Well, we, I don't even. How do you play? Dan, come on. I don't know. I, I, I you never sheltered. played. I never. No. How do you play it? Never have I ever. You say never have I ever. Usually it gets a little dark and dirty, but you you know you say never have I ever jumped off a bridge into a river, and then if you have, you drink, and then it always ends up turning sexual or creepy or weird, and it's a fun Wait, game. If it, I say never have I ever, yes, and then you have to guess whether I did. Never or I didn't. have. Well, you say never have I 
F, like something you've never done. So Dan, what have you never done? Never have I ever, but can I lie? No. Oh, I have to be, I have to be. That's, that's okay. the point. Never have I ever uh, bungee jumped. That's boring, but I, I'm going to stay boring. That's boring, but essentially everybody else in the game would drink. Just because I said that? Well, if they have done it. So then you say, when it gets sexual, you say, never have I ever had a threesome. And then you look around the room and the people who have obviously drink. So it becomes this very provocative. I would never have I ever said that I never have I ever had a three threesome. <laughs> I would never say that. So see, try to wrap your head yeah, around that. You're so uh, Okay. Here's, here's what we're doing. The membership, the Flaviar membership goes to Mia Opasone. Congratulations, Mia. You're part of the Flaviar Grill. Yes. Congratulations. And and Mike Demler gets the books. He gets a copy of my book, American Wino, and a copy of Tracy's book. Fear is just a four-letter word. And he, she's right, because I count it. Four <laughs> letters. I did my work before this thing came. Tracy yes. Tudor, I, it's been a real pleasure hanging out with you. And uh, yeah, we're going to do it again sometime. Yes, let's have cognac. We'll do it. Every time we hang out, it's cognac. All the cognac oh, you can let's drink. Be, let's do tequila, because that's really my like spirit of choice. All right. Well, then All right. Next time, it's tequila. Um, but follow, go follow Tracy on and, and, and watch Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles and get her book. Come on. Get it. Look at it. <laughs> right there look at that cover good looking cover don't get my book i don't even care i don't care if you get my book i don't even want you to except you tracy i'll give it to you uh but again i do want to thank everybody out there for spending time with us it's always great doing this and uh we're back next week with ben norris from never have i ever had a threesome i'm totally getting on that and i'm going to play never have i ever with you guys that'll be fun all right you're in all right guys <laughs> bye Bye, everybody.